We are back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And straight to the first major conversation this morning, where Nigeria's President uh, Muhammad Buhari has ordered the Nigeria Immigration Service to make the country's border or borders impenetrable uh, to infiltrators ahead of the forthcoming elections in a matter of uh, weeks. Uh, this was contained in a statement made available to journalists by the Ministry of Interior yesterday, Tuesday. Now, Minister of Interior Rauf Aregbe Shola, uh, through his media advisor, Shola Fashure, conveyed President Buhari's directive while inaugurating the Katsina NIS Command Office, that's the Nigerian Immigration Service Command Office, and the rollout of the enhanced e-passport services in the state. According to uh, Regbe Shola, the minister, uh, Mr. President's order is between uh, now and the period that Nigeria concludes all its elections. The Nigerian Immigration Service um, should make the board country's borders impregnable even after the elections. Uh, Dixon Saji, who is um, a security expert, joins us right now to uh, discuss the importance of uh, ni making Nigeria's borders impenetrable. He's a global security analyst. Dixon, it's good to have you back Thank you on very the program. Much. All right. Um, uh, 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 what is the importance of, of having such a move, you know, a directive to the Nigerian Immigration Service because of the elections? Um, and what do we see happening? What's the danger if we do not protect the borders with extra security during the elections, before the elections and after the elections? Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Good morning. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's disturbing when I, get, uh, when I read that story. Uh, because, uh, you know, when disasters strike, the time to prepare has passed. You don't prepare during time of disaster or during time of uh, trouble. You prepare ahead. Uh, that instruction or that authority coming from the presidency is baseless. Uh, baseless in the sense that uh, uh, it's impossible. And let's just tell ourselves the truth, it's impossible. Nigeria is one of the most uh, um, on, on governed space we have presently because uh, when you look at the irregular routes in Nigeria, we have about 1,400 uh, irregular routes, uh, illegal routes, you can say, um, here in Nigeria. And uh, asking the Nigerian immigration to make it impenetrable is a big fat lie. It is penetrable uh, because the immigration service cannot perform any miracle as it is now. Uh, they cannot govern the 114 illegal routes, as it, as it is now, and uh, they are short of manpower. Presently, the Nigerian immigration is about 35,000 um, strength capacity, governing a country sitting on about uh, 923,000 square kilometers. And also, when you look at the Nigerian uh, borderline, we are bordered by Cameroon in the, in, in the east, bordered by uh, Niger Republic in the north, bordered by Chad Republic in the northeast, bordered by Benin Republic here in Lagos, south, west. And uh, telling the Nigerian immigration that uh, they should ensure that uh, uh, the border is, uh, should be impenetrable, uh, I think uh, that instruction uh, is not going to hold any water. So, so in other words, this is security tautology. Tautology, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, just to add to that, uh, I mean, so we remember the fact where the uh, Chief of Defense Staff sometime last year had admitted to the fact that about 137 borders of ours are porous uh, out of, you know, all of that. But, you know, looking at it, how do we now manage the fact that our borders are porous with the elections? Uh, and you can't also... Uh, ignore the fact that internally we're going through a lot. Sure, we're going through a lot, like you rightly said. Now, um, you know, I've just highlighted the borderlines, uh, the nations that borders us, just inclusive uh, Equatorial Guinea, that's from the maritime uh, point of view. Uh, this irregular route I'm talking about, illegal route I'm talking about, uh, is all governable. Uh, most of these criminal elements, you know, capitalize on that vulnerability and penetrates uh, into the Nigerian space. And that's why over the years, the Nigerian government has been uh, fighting it so hard to you know, uh, decimate uh, these criminal uh, elements that are you know, you know, worrying the territorial space of Nigeria. So uh, when you say the Chief of Defense Staff said uh, 100 or something, uh, uh, something uh, irregular borderline, for me, what they need to start looking at now is uh, looking at the projection of uh, technology because no uh, essential manpower will govern our, our govern space. So what they need to start doing now, like many times ago, some time ago, I've advised the Nigerian government to ensure that they you know, 
you know, project a lot of uh, drones to the Nigerian immigration. So if that instruction is coming from uh, the presidency, then I should expect them to give them drones because when we talk about security, security cannot be achieved by uh, human capacity alone. Uh, there are three uh, 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 procedures. We have the human procedures, we have the technological procedures, and we have the processes. So now we have the human procedures, that is the immigration officers and men. We need to start looking at the technological procedures as well, which has to do with drone, you know, surveillance equipment that will hover around our government space, pick in those threats and also analyze it. I mean, just, uh, you know, as I was waiting, I mean, Kofi is going to come in in no time, but let's look at it because it feels like we're always making an excuse that uh, security challenges and ch issues that we're faced with is because we lack technology. We also say that with our elections, that if we just only if we can, you know, have electronic voting, then everything is going to be okay. But we also forget the fact that this technology or this um, theory, whatever it is, is not operated in space. Humans operate it. So uh, you, I, are we taking out the human aspect of it? The fact that, you know, there's corruption, people can compromise the system. For instance, Raila Odinga recently made uh, a statement to us to the fact that, you know, the Beavers alone technology can be manipulated and that, uh, you know, these elections, we have to be very uh, careful with it. Vice President Jemma Sibanja also made reference to the fact that INEC has to have an act together. So is it enough to say, uh, you know, the DSS, I mean, the security uh, officials actually need uh, the drones? Will the drones an alone be enough uh, to solve the security issue? What about corruption? How about people who are uh, compromising, giving information? The molds in the system. All right, thank you. That's a very intelligent question. You know, the main reason why technology is projected into the security space is to reduce the loss of life. Sometimes when you send in like 10 men to go and engage, uh, uh, let me say, some group of enemies in the, in the borderline, you end up losing all the 10 men. Now, instead of losing, losing the whole 10 men or 10 immigration officers, you send in technology. For example, if you shoot down a drone, it's only going to cause a financial loss. But if you bring down a human being, it's going to cause human loss. Now, the essence of technology plays, a two, plays two roles. Now, technology captures crime in progress. Crime in progress in the sense that if we have about 500 illegal, Im irregular immigrants, because by default you don't classify any human being illegal, if you have 500 irregular immigrants trying to penetrate the Nigerian space without proper identification process, this technology goes to the space, pick them up, analyze it, and send it to the central command system, and the immigration officers and men at this point in time can go and lay ambush to these guys or, you know, Pick them up where they are. But if you start projecting the immigration officers and projecting our officers and men in this crime-prone environment, we will lose more men. We will continue to suffer losses, human-wise. Sure that is why technology is introduced to reduce the high rates. I'm sure of they, losses. they may have to go through some visa forest you know, <laughs> to get to some of these border points. Maybe, maybe they can do what the army, the navy, okay, the army and the air force have been able to do. You know, which is go through, and maybe as they go in, they might see some of these uh, yeah, bandits and, and <laughs> chase them up. Because you've said that the points are quite widespread. A thousand, more than a thousand, four hundred entry, you know, illegal. And, and it's, it's, it's very porous. It's very, very porous. You know, so, porous. so it, it, it's, you know, how, I mean, if you hear the Minister of Interior saying the President has ordered that the border should be impenetrable, <laughs> what does he mean? <laughs> I mean, you know, you ask yourself, what do, hearing from you, are you an expert? It's now beginning to make, making me ask, what, what does he mean? What, what, I mean, do these guys even know what well, that, that they're doing? That was a joke. That was a joke. Uh, you know, so, so okay, but let's, let's, let's move on. Um, what are the dangers of, of having a porous, porous borders in a, an election period? What right. exactly are we, are we up against? What's the threat? Thank, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, a borderless nation, I've always said, is a no nation. Uh, just for example, maybe uh, you, I, I, you look so good. Nigeria looks good on you. I forget to compliment you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you. You see thank what you. I tell you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I hope you're not planning to jack up because the rate of jack up is in. <laughs> so, now, what, what I'm trying to say is, is this. You see, uh, INEC has four years to plan. The Nigerian security agent has four years to plan. Someone who gained admission into a university four years ago is wrapping up to graduate from the university. So any person who is given four years to plan and did not plan within that four years 
it's a failure. Mm. But are, are we looking at, at, at people who are going to come in and vote? Uh, people who can come in and be used for, uh, uh, you know, violence, violence yeah. to rig the election. Yeah. Is that what we're looking at? Well, we should be looking at multi-dimensional approach because when it comes to security, you don't zoom in on once. You don't zoom in on a particular threat. You just try to expand and try to check around uh, the space and ensure that uh, you close up on all the uh, okay. loophole areas. Like in the last 2019 elections, we saw mass exodus of people coming from the Nigerian Republic to come and vote. We saw a mass exodus of people coming from the uh, Chad Republic to come and vote. Now the question is, how did they gain entrance into the Nigerian space? We are captured. Having been captured, then giving voters' card. Because definitely they can't come to Nigeria and vote without voters' card. That tells you that INEC has failed in its area of responsibility as well. Because uh, the last time I went for capturing, I tried to assess the processes. You know, they'll just give you a form. Where are you from? What's your local government? Your father's name? Your mother's name? It's a defeatable process. Defeatable process in the sense that any person can come from any part of the world and just give the details where he or she is from, and you cannot verify. So free for all. Free for all, because there's no investigative process to go and check. KYC, know your customer. No investigation processes to go and check. If truly, the identity this guy gave us in this capturing process is really the process. But I think that is, uh, you know, operational laziness. If not, I don't think you can just, just, just open your system, people come around, you take them, give them from sign. And for me, those voters' card is just, let's just manage it. Let's manage it let's just manage so, but, but, but nations, uh, traditionally, all over the world, or at least in Africa, during election periods, will always shut that be your borders. Okay. Why? So the reason is, why is, is it not the same thing? Maybe I remember. I mean, we, we, we recently Benin some Republic slack. had our elections, and, and they, they shut their borders. Yes, had elections, if you shut, shut borders. down these borders, what about the 1,400 irregular routes I just talked about? Mm -hmm. That has been the problem. You see, um, the, the immigration services are solely responsible in protecting our national borders, not from external aggression, just protecting our national borders in the area of security, so that people who don't have uh, the permits uh, to come into Nigeria don't penetrate our national borders. Now, what the immigration service needs to start looking at presently um, is to carry out a, a crime mapping analysis of our national borders, ascertain all the vulnerable areas. Um, I, I remembered uh, 22 years ago, sorry, 23 years ago when I was in the front line, you know, somebody came to give us an information in the borderline. And what the person told us was that some guys are trying to smuggle items in an unbound space. As at 23 years ago, and till date, we are still suffering from this government space. And one, one of the reasons why Nigerian is suffering from most of this high speed of insecurity is because of the porosity of our national borders. So if the presidency or the government declares a state of emergency in our national borders, I tell you security issues will mitigate. This state of insecurity will be reduced because most of these guys, like one celebrity arm robber, I don't want to mention his name, uh, <laughs> he told us, he said it very clearly, he said, the reason why he succeeded in his arm robbery days was due to the porosity of our national borders. This guy would disturb Lagos, disturb uh, Ibadan, disturb some states in Nigeria. What he does is that he would fetch this catch, you know, go to Benin Republic, enjoy his life. When he's done with that catch, he will come back, strike the Nigerian space, and go back. So he said very clearly that the reason why he was successful in his days of arm robbery was because of the porosity of our national borders. So what we need to start looking at after this 2023 election, we have 2027 election, the Nigerian Immigration Service, there is an agency in the Immigration Service, which is known as Border Management Agency, the Border Management Department, that are solely responsible for this. They should start looking at carrying out an assessment of the, our national borders. Then go back to the Minister of Interior and say, Sir, uh, you told us that uh, we should make sure that this place is impenetrable. We are sorry it's penetrable. No, no, but, but I mean, it's the conversation, it's the question that I raised to you prior to this time. Yeah. If, 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 you know, uh, Chief of Defense Staff General Lucky Rabo had identified or mentioned that we have 137 borders in the north that are unprotected out of the 261. Borders that have been or routes? Borders. Okay. So, so we're still talking about the fact that we're porous. I mean, we okay. have porous borders. Right. And there's been identification by a, a highly, you know, respectable yeah. uh, <laughs> military sure, personnel. Sure. Yeah. Why? 137 of them. And, you know, I like the fact that we're very precise with the communication, the language we use. These borders are unmanned. They are manned, yeah. So is that where the problem lies? Can we man these borders before, you know, the 25th of uh, February? <laughs> no, 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 because we're saying that the borders are unmanned. I mean, th these areas are unmanned. He's already said it's too late. <laughs> how, how can it be too late? Where is the, where is, where is the strength coming from? 
I have just told you that we have 35,000. So we don't, we, we don't have, if you we don't to, have the military. Um, if, if you want to deploy 100, 100 immigration officers in those irregular routes, it won't cover it. And that is why, for now, if we want to look at you know, a short time plan for now, then we should start looking at drones. Uh, drone, drone, drone deployment of drones. You know, when you apply drones in this, uh, most of these areas, you know, I was watching a war film uh, some few days ago, and what the Americans did was that they sent in drones to monitor the enemy line. Now, these enemy lines, they were coming to attack the Americans, and they were watching them, and they lay ambush on these guys. Before those guys could get to their area of uh, target, they were all neutralized. Now, the essence of this drone is that, okay, we are watching them, they keep monitoring them, analyze the environment, carry out a, sur a satellite surveillance of that environment. Having carried out a sur satellite environment, uh, sur um, surveillance on that environment, what you need to do now is where you project the manpower. But if you are telling me now that you want the immigration service to go and start manning those borders, before they even get there, maybe they want to travel by road or whatever the case may be, before they even get there and deploy them, the election is over. So for now, this is not the time to give them such marching order. Source machine orders have been given so, four so years we, ago. Are you saying that we should just go ahead and ignore the fact that we have 137? This is what uh, is reported by the chief of defense staff on man. We, we should just follow the arms and allow 137 unprotected? I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's not achievable. Let me tell you, for example, so, so Borono State, Borono State, for example, is one of the biggest uh, states in Nigeria, with 76,000 square kilometers, like uh, three times of Lagos State. Now, the travel capacity in Borono State, you can spend days to travel within Borono State. If you want to project these guys right now, you need to start looking at the risk implication as well, because the risk is high. When, if the risk is high, you have to mitigate uh, the projection of manpower. Now, if we want to succeed in this very area. The military has to come on board to support the Nigerian Immigration Service. But if you want to start deploying the Nigerian Immigration Service to this high-prone, high-threat environment, the, the risk is very high as it is now. The threat is high. If you project them, protect, project them in such vulnerable environments, we will lose a lot of men. So the whole essence of an election is not to lose our officers and men. The whole essence of an election is for us to, you know, uh, have a peaceful and successful election. So for us to succeed in these very uh, 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 border issues is for the immigration service, the Nigerian military, the Nigerian police, there should be a such form of integration. Because going by the strength of the Nigerian immigration service, they cannot cover our borderline. Right. That's what I'm just saying. It seems like uh, we, may, we may need to uh, go and consult Donald Trump. You know, so that he can tell us how to build that wall. Oh, the border, the Mexico in, wall. In Nigeria. But um, I think uh, another thing that could help us is uh, uh, a SWOT analysis, some sort of maybe to look at the threats. And I've been asking you about the threats which you've talked about um, uh, the fact that people from uh, aliens will come into Nigeria and vote. Uh, that one is uh, foregone. You said it's, uh, it's that water has sailed uh, from, uh, what do they call it, um, a Marina. Uh, wharf jetty that boat has sailed already yes it's even even but he talked about also maybe some of these uh, foreign elements being used for violence political thuggery and um, since the borders are so so porous you have a thousand four hundred entry points into the country unofficially legal yeah. now what can be done security wise to to make sure the election is not affected by foreign elements in the uh, red spots you know, the flashpoints in the country. Flashpoints, yeah, fantastic. You see, most times uh, people address security without carrying out an analysis, without carrying out a risk assessment. Like you rightly said, uh, take for example Lagos State now. If you want to ask me uh, which part of Lagos State do you think is a, a crime prone area, in my own perspective, I want to say Oshodi, for example. I, <laughs> I don't want to say why. Let's not go there. All right. I just, I, I'm, for example, let me say Oshodi. Now, when you identify the crime-prone environment, what you know, need to do is to project reasonable security force. Because what we do here in our country is just like, go, come, go, come. We don't carry out an assessment. We just carry out our men. We project them. Now, the immigration service, we need to carry out an assessment, borderline-wise, and inform the, uh, the Minister of Interior that 
XYZ location is where we are going to perceive the threats. Then going by the election, what INEC should be doing is that the security advisor to the INEC need to also carry out an assessment as well because it's so disturbing. You see a lot of INEC facility being burnt down, a lot of uh, voters, uh, uh, voting materials being burnt down by most of these uh, fifth columnists, if I may say, or most of these uh, guys that just want to threaten our democracy. So what they need to start looking at is to carry out an assessment and ascertain most of the vulnerable areas where the risk is coming from. Because if you don't, I just, for example, if you go to the hospital, for example, and you tell the doctor you're not feeling fine, it won't just give you a drug. It will ask you which part of your body are you, are, are, you, are you feeling pains? What's wrong with you? So you say, ah, the left side, my, 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 the left, my left side or my right side, this is where I'm feeling the pain. Then it will ask you, what, how, how, how are you feeling? So during those process of diagnosis, the doctor will now be able to ascertain what the problem is. That's how security is being treated. In security management, if you don't carry out an assessment of what the problem is, you cannot project solution. Because the reason why you need to carry out an assessment so that you'll be able to ascertain the number of manpower you project within that environment, technological-wise, you need to ascertain what you need to project in that environment, and also how to cut off the opportunity from this so, criminals. So, I mean, uh, we like the insight that you have, you know, uh, brought in. I mean, we're being very realistic, but let's let's even get to the point of you being an expert now. I mean, you have been in the system, and we're asking: Is there anything? Are there security measures? Is there anything that you can speak to? Uh, you know, speaking to this government, speaking to INEC, what exactly can be done? Are there little measures that can be taken to ensure that we have this election not entirely perfect, but you know, near perfect? <laughs> Four years, it should be perfect. If you say near perfect, uh, I, I think uh, INEC have done their best so far, so good. Uh, the introduction of beavers is going to reduce the criminal activities because most of these guys, what they are, uh, their plan is to come and snatch the ballot box. That's what most of this criminal element does and also to disturb the election space and instill fear uh, in, the, uh, in the electorate. So uh, the introduction of beavers has drastically mitigated uh, uh, let me say, the passive threats. Okay, now you ask me if I would like to advise, uh, what would I advise? For me, uh, what would I would advise the government is that uh, we must first of all have it in our mind that uh, the time to prepare uh, is, not, uh, is not the time of the incidents. You have to prepare ahead of time because I highly say that. So, no backup plan? I mean, we just, we just get to see that if. That's, that's the problem. Coffee, if, we, problem. if you see those movies. We, yes. I mean, there's always a backup plan. So we, we, that, that, that's, that is the issue. We don't have so, a, so, there's no backup we don't, plan. We don't have a backup plan. There can't plan. be any backup plan. We don't have any backup plan. But can if, there be any backup there plan? There can't be a backup plan. The only, so backup, backup, plan, the backup? The, the only backup plan we should be expecting now is just our. The capability and capacity of our security agency because the threat we are expecting is not a biological threat, it's not a nuclear threat, it's not a technological threat, it's a human threat. So if you are expecting human threats, what you need to address human threat is human capacity and technological capacity, like I have read earlier said. Now, Beavers has already mitigated the area of bo a ballot box snatching, which is a very good one from INEC. Now, what we are going to experience in this election time is violence, you know, instigation of, uh, uh, you know, projection of fear in the Nigerian space. So the security agent needs to assess most of this crime-prone area, like I'm rightly, I've said it earlier on, that they need to assess the crime-prone area. Check where the threat is coming from. Take, for example, now, uh, burning of INEC uh, uh, materials. We've experienced it from uh, a, a Boeing State. We've experienced it from Anambra the, State. The southeast. Which is, uh, southeast. Then what the INEC, uh, security agents need to do is to project reasonable security force in that environment so that those criminal elements and will be unable to, to penetrate yeah, it, it's such place. It's very interesting. Yeah, we will soon be done. But you're talking about the security forces um, and the role they will play in, in projecting uh, on, on this on these uh, uh, flash zones. Um, but the element of uh, compromise by the security uh, uh, agents, agents, uh, agencies or operatives is, uh, is a huge one. No, I mean, which I in, reference in, 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 in River State this week, the opposition parties in River State, particularly the SDP press, uh, governorship candidate and the APC, they have um, alleged uh, attacks, you know, and they're saying the police in the, that state, the police commission, that maybe spies. Some of them say that even police have actually attacked some of these politicians, you know, or have been around, you know, you know looking at thugs attacking, did nothing. Um, it, one, one thing that really captures the, the compromise, or, compromise of these guys, um, in 2015, Nigeria, the federal government, through the Central Bank of Nigeria, banned the importation of rice into the country. By the year 2020, Benin Republic 
a country of just 13 million people, about 13 million people, was said to be the seventh largest importer of rice in the world. It, they imported rice worth $663 million. And we're getting rice from there. Uh, so I wonder how many times a day people in the Benin Republic eat rice for them to be this, a small country. So, I mean, you, it can be, you can put one and two together to see what's going on, <laughs> you know. So um, um, what about this, 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 this compromise by security operatives, even military police or even immigration officials? In discipline. In discipline, and that's a disturbing situation. You see, when Americans say they are the world power, they, bring, they build their world power from their military might. Russia claims their world power. They build their world power from military might. Any nation that doesn't stand firm to build the capacity, efficiency, and capability of its military and security agents, agency, they are planning to fail. Because there are times you plan to fail, and there are times you plan to succeed. So how, how can so, we get that discipline? Because it used it, to be it, before now. It, it has to be command. It has to be from the command control center. It has to be leadership. Uh, because, like you rightly said, most times uh, I've seen a lot of times we see videos flying around. You see police officers, military officers, uh, of, uh, soldiers, you know, abusing, uh, you know, uh, Nigerians because they are carrying one or two uh, personality and whatever the case may be. And most of these officers and men were trained with our tax. Uh, our, tax, our tax money. So why should I pay tax for you to pay the police officers and the, those same police officers are protecting the allies to intimidate the poor? That is a no-no, and that's why we need a transition. Because what is happening in Nigeria presently, uh, presently as it is, the forest scarcity, the Naira scarcity, because Naira now is more valuable than dollar, because uh, those days you look for dollar, you don't get it, but now you don't have, you have, we're not getting Naira. So what we are experiencing presently is closing ceremony of this administration. And this closing ceremony is very, very tough and very, very painful. But for me, if we want to get it right, command every officers, every commanders must call their men to order. Every state commissioner of police must call their men to order. Because if we keep on experiencing this, how do you expect us to introduce com uh, community and state policing? We have to if we introduce community and state policing, that tells you that most of these state governors, they will abuse that system. No, no, but we, we, um, we have to go. Kofi, uh, just before we go, I mean, I'm not expecting that you answer this, but uh, if we blame the military for lack of discipline and we say that we have lost professionalism in the, in the police and in every, you know, security architecture, then is that entirely the problem? What happens to the motivation? What happens to the welfare of the military? I mean, look at that. How many times have we heard of people protesting for and allowances that have not been paid? Retired police officers, retired military officers. You don't even want to talk about I mean, because by virtue of what they do, they can't even come out to protest. I mean, we're, I think we're almost in that category. So you can't even come out to tell the people what exactly you're going through. So you have to wait to get onto that part. So, I mean... Has there been any, what's the level of motivation for this personnel? Because you can't be demanding what you haven't <clears throat> imputed into. What, what would you be taking from a system you haven't invested into? These are human beings. We can't discard, you know, their welfare and then expect that they perform magic and expect that they don't compromise and get in bed, you know, with the terrorists. I've made a lot of move about motivations. Motivation is very, very essential uh, in uh, management of our security agency because for you to put your life on the line to protect uh, the territorial integrity of Nigeria, you need to be well taken care of. Uh, Health-wise, you need to be very well taken care of. Financial-wise, you need to be well taken care of. The motivations here in Nigeria is one of the weakest motivations I've ever seen in the whole of uh, in, in the whole of Africa, because you see a soldier being paid thirty, fifty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars a month, not even up to a hundred dollar per now. And when a soldier dies in the battlefield, their wives and children are being you know sent out of the power barrack within six or three months. Most of these motivations is what the new administration needs to address, because it is so, so the government needs to declare a state of emergency. My theory on that is that if you're a corrupt officer, yeah. official. All right, you, you can pay a million dollars, you're still going to do what you're going to do. Oh, sure. Because you're greedy. Yeah, it's greedy. If you're, if you're a corrupt commissioner of police who collects money from the governor to scuttle to the democracy in elections and to you know, do his bidding. Your professionalism has been defeated. It's just uh, who you are. That's who you are, it's really. Who you sometimes money can change your mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the Bible says so, we have to go. We have to go. We have more discussions ahead. Definitely, when we return, we'll be looking at, you know, wetlands and uh, what exactly uh, that means for us as Nigerians and also Africa as a continent. Please stay with us.